So I've heard people say that Jesus sinned because he let his anger get the best of him, which caused him to flip tables and drive people out of the temple, and that he sinned in that manner. Okay, first off, before we get any further in this video, we got to make it clear that Jesus never sinned. Here's some scripture to back that up. In 1 John 3, 4 through 5, it says, Everyone who sins is breaking God's law, for all sin is contrary to the law of God. And you know that Jesus came to take away our sins, and there is no sin in him. Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin, but anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. And in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 through 15, it says, So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let's hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. And guys, when it comes to Jesus being our Savior, Christianity really would not be around if Jesus did not live a perfect life. We needed Jesus to live a perfect life to become the perfect sacrifice in order for our sins to be forgiven. And if Jesus didn't live a perfect life, our sins would not be able to be forgiven by his sacrifice. And so we have to understand that Jesus did live a sinless life. We just read two passages in the scripture that confirm that. And there are other passages as well that say the same thing, that Jesus didn't sin. But let's take a look at that account that people look at to say, well, I think he did sin. One of the accounts is found many times in the gospel, but it, it's in the gospels. It says in Mark chapter 11, verse 15 through 18, when they arrived back in Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out the people buying and selling animals for sacrifices. He knocked over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves. And he stopped everyone from using the temple as a marketplace. As a marketplace. He said to them, the scriptures declare, my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. When the leading priests and the teachers of the religious law heard what Jesus had done, they began planning how to kill him. But they were afraid of him because of the people, because the people were so amazed by his teaching. So we kind of have to understand this passage to see why Jesus became so angry and that this anger that he had caused him to drive people out of the temple. First off, we have to remember that they did not have cars, trains, or planes back then. You know, for me, I live in a very, very rural era, area, rural area, uh, and I live about a hundred miles from the closest Walmart that's in the United States. I live about 20 miles from one that's in Canada, but I live a hundred miles from the closest Walmart that's in the United States. So it takes us a little over an hour and a half to get there, you know, most of the way, or half the way anyways, we're on the highway so we can go a little bit faster. But to cover a hundred miles, an hour and a half. Now, I can't imagine, you know, here we have a car, we don't have a pickup. I can't imagine, disregard the mess in the car. I can't imagine having like a doves or, or, or a lamb back there and taking that to our place that we do grocery shopping or to that Walmart for an hour and a half. That would be pretty uncomfortable to keep that animal safe, clean, not crying the whole time. It'd be a pretty uncomfortable trip. But if we go back 2,000 years where they didn't have cars, planes, or trains, or ways to get around fast, that a lot of times it meant they were walking or riding animals to get from one place or another. And we realize that these Israelites traveled for hundreds of miles to make it to the temple to offer these sacrifices. We begin to realize, first off, how blessed we are that we have air conditioning and we have heat in the vehicle for winter and summer months. That's a blessing. And that we have a cover as well as that in case it rains. <laughs> Stuff like that. It's a blessing. That's the first thing. Second thing is that it would have taken them a while to get there. And while they were getting there, if they were to take these animals that under the old covenant, they had to sacrifice to God, to honor God, to have their sins forgiven, we begin to realize that it would be pretty hard to keep those animals alive. And so what would happen is these people in Jerusalem where the temple was at, they would realize this. And so they would get these animals. They'd either raise it themselves or they had someone else raise it. And they would sell it 
to these Israelites that were coming from far away to worship God at the temple and to offer sacrifices. Now, the interesting thing here uh, is in verse 17, he says, My temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. And so we get a little bit of a hint of what's going on here. These Israelites or these people that were selling to these Israelite travelers that were coming from hundreds of miles away, they knew that they didn't really have any other place to buy animals from. They knew that it would be hard for them to bring their animals with them. And it sounds like here what Jesus is saying is that because of this, they would start to have ungodly business. So that's that seems to be the first thing. They would jack up their prices and sell these animals more than for more than what they were worth to these Israelites that were traveling from far away because they knew the Israelites couldn't buy animals anywhere else. That's one thing. The other thing, my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you've turned it into. So that means that they were having this marketplace and selling these animals and these items for sacrifice in the temple. There are different parts of the temple. Many believe this was like the Gentile court where the Gentiles were welcomed into the court, but still a place of prayer and they were turning it into a marketplace. And so because of these things, because these people were having ungodly business that they were taking advantage of their neighbors, not showing love to their neighbors, but taking advantage of them by jacking up those prices and by changing the temple into a marketplace, Jesus got mad. And we see in the account of John, it says that he made a whip out of cords. Now, I'm not sure if there's just like a bunch of cords laying around and he picked them up in one hand and just started whipping people. Or to me, I feel like he would have weaved the cords together. It says he made a whip of cords, which means that he planned what he was going to do. He knew that he was going to drive those people out. He knew he was going to start lashing that whip around. He knew he was going to flip tables and drive the animals out and everything like that to clear the temple uh, for his father in heaven that he showed this righteous anger and when we look at righteous anger it shows us through Jesus example that it's not a sin because we see already that he lived a sinless life and we look at the Old Testament and we see that God gets angry too that there are many times where Moses has to be like God whoa 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 God 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 whoa whoa do not wipe out this nation that you rescued from Egypt. I know they're annoying. I know they complain. <laughs> uh, that they complain about a lot of things. I know they disobey you, but don't wipe them out. Because think about all the other countries that know what happened with Israel being rescued from Egypt by your hand. What are they going to think about you after you wipe them out in the wilderness? So Moses had to do that many times in the Old Testament after Israel left Egypt because God was angry with the way that Israel disobeyed him. That they did not follow his commands. And we see that anger is not a sin as long as it is righteous. So what are some examples of righteous anger today? You know, I think whenever we hear about, a, about children being abused, it's good to have righteous anger about that. Whenever we hear about children being trafficked, uh, you know, it's good to be angry about that. We should rejoice when we hear about those federal agents that busted these human trafficking rinks and, and rescued 30, 40, 40 children at a time at these different trafficking rinks that we've been hearing in the news the past uh, couple years here. That's good news. That should make us happy. But at the same time, we should have some righteous anger about that because that's not, that's ungodly. That's unmoral and that's evil of what's happening there. And we should take issue with those things that go against the will of God. So what are some other things that are okay to have righteous anger for? What do you think? Again, Jesus did not sin. He showed righteous anger by having the sin filling the temple by these, these people not loving their neighbors that were traveling from far away. He showed righteous anger and we can have righteous anger without sinning as well. So that said, what are some things in this world that cause you to have righteous anger? And, you know, they say when it comes to anger that sometimes it can lead you to sin. Righteous anger in the same way can lead you, 
really to do God's will. If he's making you angry over something that doesn't please him, it can lead you to doing his will. Again, there is a fine line there and it takes a lot of prayer because just by me saying that, I can see that being misconstrued in a, in a bad way and actually evil happening from it. And so you got to make sure it's from God that it lines up with his will. But righteous anger is okay to have. Realize that. Realize it's not a sin. So that all said, guys, thank you for watching. Be challenged by that. Go ahead and take a look at the rest of the accounts in the Gospels about Jesus flipping tables. Look at John chapter 2 is where you find that account in John. There's another account in Matthew as well. Take a look. Study it, read it, open up your Bible, look for it yourself. What do you think about it? Let me know. Um, but with that, guys, be blessed. Have a great day. I'm going to turn on my car because it, I'm in North Dakota and it's winter and it's getting really cold in here. So thanks for watching. See you guys later. Be blessed.